Day five of Invictus, and yeah, this is what we're facing for a lot of the time. I spent more time battling this error, trying to get into the game, than actually playing the game. Let's be realistic, this is an alpha, it starts as it is an alpha, and we do encounter these problems from time to time. So I just wanted to sort of highlight that yes, it is an alpha, these things will happen. Now you play the game because you enjoy it, you do it, and you want to help out with the alpha testing, but you do have to expect that sometimes you're going to end up with periods where it's going to be really difficult to get in. Nonetheless, we were eventually able to get in, and once we got in, we ended up finding that Invictus was technically over. There was no more manufacturers on display at the convention centre, so we had to leave. But you may say, well, hang on a minute, Draken. Wasn't there one more manufacturer to go? What about Drake Interplanetary? Well, Drake Interplanetary is no, doesn't provide any ships to the UEE Navy, and the UEE Navy is the ones who are running Invictus. So therefore, Drake Interplanetary couldn't be at that event. But Drake Interplanetary do make military vessels, and they do make those sort of things. So they weren't to be put off by this. So at the end of Invictus, they went and hired a hangar down at the Riker Memorial Starport around the corner, and they've turned around and built their own convention. So welcome to DefenseCon 2950. This is down at the Riker Memorial Starport, and this is where Drake Interplanetary are showing off their ships. Now Drake Interplanetary, as you can see here, they supply not the Navy, but they do supply a lot of local defense forces. They provide it to local authorities like police forces and stuff like that. So they do provide military ships. They provide escort vessels. Um, though there is a question over some of their supplies because sometimes a lot of their ships end up in the hands of, well, people like pirates sometimes. But they do say they are a legitimate company and they don't know how these... Uh, these ships end up in the pirate hands anyway. But it does bring us down into this hangar here. And as you can see on the screen here, they have basically done their version of Invictus. So at the back here, we have uh, all the various different leaflets. And we also have uh, t-shirts and everything else doing their merch just as they did before. And then we get all the ships that are out on display all across this hangar. And so here we have the Cutlass Black, probably one of their most well-known ships that they have around. Uh, with its lovely side doors on there, with big side doors that open up. And plus we have these engines at the back that remind me very much of the Firefly. Uh, Serenity, the Firefly class uh, from the, uh, the same TV series. Um, actually, when I first started playing Star Citizen, I did a free fly, and this was the ship that they gave you during that free fly, so I do remember the ship. I wasn't a big fan on it. I mean, compared to some of the other ships I've flown since, but it was all right. I like the cargo bay. The cargo bay was really nice. This cabin space feels a little bit, I don't know, awkward, I suppose. You have this front cabin with pilot and co-pilot sat behind each other which means making being a pilot it's a little difficult to get to the front there and then at the back here we have beds and a turret as well um this is like your living space and that's it really that's all there is to that ship and then the hold behind it the next ship we've got next is the drake buccaneer uh this is basically their version of a fighter uh I, it's an interesting thing with this one man fighter actually is that i've seen quite a few pictures of people of uh pictures of people putting this into things like carracks apparently if it fits it goes, and it's quite difficult, but it will actually fit in there. Uh, the next one up is the Drake Herald. This is their equivalent of a data runner. So a bit like the Mercury Star Runner, though probably a little bit smaller. I like the concept of this. This is pretty much just a cabin and engines. That's literally it, and the servers that you need for doing the data running. So you go in through the corridor in here, and you'll see the cabin inside is just so tiny. It's just pretty much just engine. As much engine as possible on the back here. So you've got a little bed at the back. And then if you turn around, you'll see there's a few bits of computer consoles on the side there for obviously the data side of things and a couple of servers in there in the dark and then you have your actual cockpit at the front there and that's all there is that is all there is to it it is <laughs> such a interesting uh, niche vessel but i do like it in that sense because of that right so we come next to now another cutlass this is the cutlass blue that was recently released the cutlass blue is uh basically a law enforcement ship uh, i know there were a few people who weren't as impressed with it after having ordered it originally um i'm not sh quite sure what it is it's not something i personally go for myself anyway but apparently it's got sirens and stuff on it though they're not actually making any noise at the moment they've just got the flashing lights but part of the cargo bay as you can see there has been split in half and they have built uh, jail cells in there 
uh, just a bit similar to like the Avenger version uh, that we saw the other day with uh, one of the other manufacturers. Um, the next one we have here then is another Cutlass. This is the Cutlass Red. This is basically their medevac ship. So it's basically an ambulance or a mobile ambulance designed to go in and uh, help people out. The nice thing with the medevac stuff is that you can act it actually has a good in-game in purpose because you can set spawn points to med, bed uh, med beds, which means then if you're playing some sort of battle or you're in some sort of big fight that's all involving sort of lots of ground troops, having one of these near your front line means you can spawn here rather than back at a base somewhere. You could actually be spawning on the ship here in the med beds. So there's a pretty cool idea there. Uh, and the other thing you'll notice here is that the turret's missing from that one. It actually just has a shower instead. After this, we then come to the back of the hall, and just as you had display halls over at the Bevet Convention Centre, so Drake has built their own display hall at the back here. But they weren't to be outdone. They have got this lovely corridor coming in here with their merch on sale and a few posters. And then you come through to the actual display area, and it's just like it's this wonderful little atmosphere they set up here. So you see, you've got all these little uh, couches and everything else around the side there, where they're sort of entertaining guests and trying to uh, win over favour. Uh, with uh, various people who got pockets deep enough to be able to buy their sort of gear. And also in the middle here is actually the thing that I've been waiting for for ages, which is the Dragonfly. Now, it's been out for ages, but it hasn't been on sale for a while. And it was put on sale, the black version, during this event, so I was able to pick it up. It is a two-man craft. You can fit two people on the back of this. It is basically uh, like a speeder bike, but it actually will fly in space as well and also go over ground. And uh, at the end of the video, you'll see I get to play with it. It's great fun. I was so glad they put it on. This next one here, we have the Drake Privateer. This is one of the larger ships in the game. We'll Will be in the game because it's not being actually released into the game yet it's just a, in process of being built and designed but as you can see here it has a number of landing pads on the side it is a carrier craft so it's designed to carry a number of smaller fighter ships and everything else along the side here and it's slightly asymmetrical in its design of its carrier deck so the ones on the starboard side that's the right hand side for those of you who don't know nautical terms is the smaller fighters and on the port side here on the left it has a larger space for larger ships to sit on this as well i've been quite intrigued and i was kind of tempted to get this one this is the vulture this is a salvaging vessel for that drake build now salvaging there's been a couple of recent uh, little bits of tidbits coming down from uh, cloud imperium gaming saying that uh, they have working soon on the salvaging mechanics there's a lot that they intend to do about it and it sounds quite intriguing um it's the one thing i've got to say things like salvaging and mining they have really tried to do something that is beyond just the usual point click wait for you to finish mining and they've actually tried to make it a bit more of an experience this final one here, this is the Drake Corsair. Corsair. This is basically their equivalent of a Corrier vessel, a bit like the uh, the, Mar uh, the Mercury Star Runner there as well. Um, again, it's got this asymmetrical design in it. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this one's asymmetrical design, but I have seen a lot of YouTubers who said they are quite excited for it and they quite like the look of that one. But it does really have that kind of pirate look to it, so I suppose it is quite fitting. And then finally we come to their centerpiece, uh, or the largest ship in the hangar for the day, and that was the Drake Caterpillar. This is quite a familiar sight, I suppose, for most of us who play Star Citizen. Uh, at the moment, at the current time, and at least until things like MISC bring out their whole series and everything else like this, this carries the most amount of cargo of any ship that's in the game at the moment. And as you can see, it has all of these wonderful cargo bays sat down the side here. Um, and it's what gives it its iconic look. It's why it's called the Caterpillar, basically. Um, but yeah, you have these wonderful bays here and you've seen people adapt and use these in sort of interesting ways. Um, but it has this sort of iconic shape along here and it's got the fifth bay here. So there's five bays in total, the fifth bay being tucked at the front here with this like open mouth design we see in the front there. Going on board, we can see that the actual interior of this looks a lot more industrial. Um, rather than different, quite different to the sort of militaristic style we've seen some of the other ships do over the last couple of days. This one has that sort of industrial feel. It's all those sort of hazard yellow being put on anything that someone might be able to bang their heads on. And piping looking like it's got foam insulation around the outside that also might sort of avoid things. And it's just got that sort of clean still feels very clean actually for an industrial unit made like it's brand new but it is very industrialized in that sort of sense this back area is obviously the engine room this is the only area where you get a bit of this smoke and everything else going along here but then you are in the engine room and this down bottom turret there just as we saw and stairs going up to uh, like the uh, the middle uh, service area but we're going to go up the ladder here first and take a look upstairs and this again is another nice little bit here just the way that they put everything all together so you've got all these ladders going into different sections of the ship and yeah we got uh, 
this is the back section here. You can sort of have a look at all the sort of piping again, as we were just describing with sort of that, that industrial feel. Um, but it doesn't feel militaristic, as I say, which is unlike what was with the hammerhead that we saw. And then we come into here. This is supposed to be the power plant room, though I'm not sure where the power plant actually is supposed to be in here, and whether it's meant to be behind those yellow rails or not. So maybe this ship is missing its power point. I don't know. I haven't seen one of these in purpose. But this is the server room we've just moved into here, and then into a small side corridor. That will then bring us through to the actual central hallway and it's from the central hallway that we get access to most of the crew main parts so you got here this is where the stairs come out at the top from the engine room and then this is probably my favorite part on the caterpillar is this room here now this is a tractor beam room this controls the tractor beam on the starboard side of the ship but it's the view from this side i think this is going to be the best view from the entire ship and there's some points on here that there's some great views but this you know you just look at all that sort of distance that you can see around and you can still see the ship there off to the left stretching away into the distance to towards the bow. I think it's a fantastic view from up there. If we go back into the service corridor and head across to the other side, we will come to the bridge. An interesting thing here is you'll note that there's actually two doors that lead us into the bridge here that open up and close. So at the front bit here, we have the front bridge cabin. And the idea is that this entire section could actually detach from the ship. It doesn't at the moment, that's a future mechanic, but it's designed to do it. Um, but we have at the front here, then the space for the pilot and the co-pilot. Bit like the, um, the Cutlass's design here, just maybe a little bit more space to get in and out here. So I'm not so, as keen on the bridge of this compared to the other side of the ship but you still got quite a nice view and i love the view going down towards the front of the bow of the caterpillar there it's absolutely gorgeous view there um but as i said this entire sh section here is meant to sort of separate away as its own separate vessel which i think is quite a cool little concept here whether you want to use it as a shuttle whether it's an escape craft at the back there we've got two more little seats there we just passed there as well for a couple more stations at the back of the bridge but if we go down at the back here you've got this ladder that leads down to this little area at the bottom so you've got in here a couple of bunks so it's uh, sort of obviously when this, this bit breaks away from the rest of the vessel you've still got places to sleep it's got its own little table there's an airlock door here off to the left and then the station at the front here that we're about to see that's going to be uh, also the tractor beam on the port side here so that you've also got access to tractor beams both sides though it doesn't seem to have as great a field of view as the one on the starboard coming back into the main ship here we have the main hatch here that will lead out during an airlock section and then we come to this door here that leads through to the cargo modules at the front of the ship and you can see we have these wonderful catwalks that go across the top here um, and they've all got their little like sort of uh, buttons there for opening and closing all the doors as well that we can see here uh, and yeah, you've it, it just got four of these fantastic modules that are sort of built down and they're all individually sort of sealable to themselves. One of the things that uh, people have been doing with these caterpillars actually is because Star Citizen, as we sort of mentioned earlier with the Buccaneer and being able to put it into things like Carrax, is that um, Star Citizen has the thing that if you can get the ship to fit, uh, then you can dock the ship there, you know. So people have been using these caterpillars as uh, imp uh, impromptu uh, carriers, you know, improvised carriers and using these cargo bays to store fighters in and then just just opening the doors up and flying the fighters out from there which i think is perfect if you can get a fighter to fit in there why not so you know you can imagine like just filling up some cargo down there uh, on a few of the cargo pods and then maybe having one of them reserved for a fighter that you then use to protect your ship if need be a bit like the sub fighters that we saw on uh, some of the other ships earlier in the week um yeah, and it's safe. We come back to here then. We have the front area here, and you can see that we're just activating, uh, closing and opening the front area there. I love the way it sort of slides in and out there as well. And then we have the front turret there as well. This is just a taxis from there. The other thing here is that all of these cargo modules, they have a ladder that will take you down to the bottom deck. And there is doors on each of these cargo pods as well that will let you walk through to the different sections the different cargo pods and we'll just take a walk through to the front here and we'll just take a look out the front here uh, like, this is quite a nice little view at the front here as well i can imagine you could put a fighter in here as well if you wanted to or you could have a couple of people standing there with guns if you were coming into attack or something like that and then we just come back into the center of the ship here and this is where we have a little dining room built in the center and a couple more bunks here so this is like the main crew quarters when the crew uh either like the turret crew that are operating here or the engineers or the people who are manually loading in the cargo and everything else probably would stay there rather than the one which is under the bridge and that was it that was the drake interplanetary day uh, defense con there for so that was really uh, quite something and it was quite nice to see it in a different place as well to the bevet convention center following on with the law i love the way it's quite law rich in that but to finish off i thought i would jump in and to my 315p uh, my origin 315p and take a quick trip over to uh, microtech because i felt i wanted to give a test out on my new dragonfly so the drake dragonfly that we saw earlier sitting in the middle there amongst all the tables 
I thought I'd give that a spin. So we spun over, uh, jumped into Quantum Drive here. This I mentioned earlier in the week on one of my earlier videos. This is one of my favourite ships that I'm flying at the moment. I just love the design on this. This is my Origin 315P. It's a really nice cockpit inside. And you can see it's just got this sleek design as we move through Quantum, getting through to Microtech. Now, Microtech recently had a new city built on it in patch 3.9, which is New Babbage. In fact, actually, it was there in 3.8, but you couldn't actually access it. 3.9, you can now actually access it. So I thought, we'd go down there, we'll give it a bit of access. So we'll bring the ship over, as you can see, through Quantum. Um, but this week has been quite fun, doing all of these Invictus uh, launch week and covering all the manufacturers. What I might do is do a bit more Star Citizen in the future. I don't think I'll uh, just keep it to that. But I do intend to stick with some of my other games as well. Uh, as I say, do bear in mind if I do Star Citizen videos, this is very much an alpha game. Um, that said, though it's in alpha, I very much thoroughly enjoy playing it at the moment, even in its alpha state. Uh, there is plenty to do in the game at the moment. Um, you just have to bear in mind that there, there are occasionally going to be bugs and issues and everything else with the game itself. In the meantime, I have some new stuff also being worked on in other places, so we will get that updated and you will see some new stuff coming up soon as well. But I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us in these five days for the Invictus launch week and also, naturally, the Drake Defence Con that we've had today. And I'll just leave you here as we're going to spin around here on my new Drake Dragonfly, just flying around and skimming around outside of uh, New Babbage here. Thank you all very much. I hope you all have a wonderful week. You take care. Bye.